In this video, we're going to take a look at step 8 of the Cheat Engine built-in tutorial which looks at multi-level pointers. We'll start by solving the challenge manually, tracing our way back through the pointers to find our way to the base address of the value, and then once we've done that we'll look at the automated approach which uses pointer maps and pointer scanning. If any of this doesn't make sense, you can go back and check the earlier episode which just looked at pointers, but I will try to recap some of that in this video. Okay, so I have Cheat Engine open as well as part 8 of the tutorial, which gives us a brief recap and tells us that in step 6, we had a simple level 1 pointer where the first address we found was the real base address. In this case, we've got a level 4 pointer, so we've got a pointer which points to another pointer, which points to another pointer, and eventually points to our health, which is this value here. So I'm going to explain this a little more in a second. Let me just first of all attach this to our tutorial process. Let's do our initial scan for 134, so that's the value at the moment. We do first scan, we change the value, and only one of these values changes to 958, so that's our correct address. And we can see here this is the value. We could go and change the color as well if we wanted to. I'm going to change that to green. And we've got a value. Say this is a player health in a game, we could go and modify the health now. But if we want to be able to modify the health after the game has restarted or after the player has died, then we probably want to find our way to the base address, to so the point, whatever points to this health. And in step six, that's exactly what we did. We traced this back and we said, find out what writes this address. It opens up this debugger and we change the value and we can actually see, okay, so what's happening is the value from EAX is being moved into this address, which is pointed to by the RSI plus the offset of 18. And if we look at this a little bit closer, we can have a look at our registers here and we can actually see the RAX is holding 46F. If we convert that from hex to decimal, that will be the value that we see here. So 1135 in decimal. And it's moving that from the EAX into the address pointed to by the RSI. Let's see what that is. So we have this address in the RSI. So it's moving it to that address plus the offset of 18. So what we can do now is let me close that. Let's go and do a search for an address. And we want to do this in hex. We'll change that to hex. It's an 8 byte because we're doing a 64 bit process, a 64 bit address. We'll do our first scan and we've got this result. So we'll add that. I'm also going to add this to our list of addresses. We don't necessarily need to track these, but if we track our addresses and offsets, it means we can avoid using the same addresses again. If there's a lot of pointers to trace through, some of these addresses might end up being the same and we want to try and avoid that. So it's a good idea to keep track of this in Notepad or something like that. So we've got this address. Now what we did in step six was we simply took this address and then we can go back to our original value. There's actually a few ways you can do this, but I'm going to go back to the original value and then we can just double click on the address. We can change this to be a pointer and then we provide that address that we've just got. Now you'll see that that's pointing to 65746, which isn't what we expect. It should be pointing to 1135. So let's change our offset to 18 and now it's pointing to the correct value. So that offset was important because we don't just want this to point to the address that was in the RSI, we want it to point to that address plus the offset of 18. So we'll click OK. Now what's different to part 6 is that whenever we found the pointer it had a green address which indicates it's the base address and a static address which isn't going to change, which means that whenever we reload the game we'll be able to use that address again. In this case, we didn't get that. So we have multiple pointers. And again, just to reiterate this, if you think about this step six example, we had our value and we found the pointer that was pointing to that value, to the literal value, say 1135. In this case, we have an address which is holding another address in memory. And that address is holding another address in memory. And that's going to go on for four times until eventually we find the actual address of the literal value 1135. Let me just also add that address that we just found here. So this is the one 590. I'm going to add that to the list. And there might be multiple paths for us to find a way back to the base. So if multiple addresses come up here, you might be able to try different ones to get the correct, still end up with the correct answer. How are we going to find the next address then? This time, what I'm going to do, I'll delete this one just so it's not in the way. Let us right click this one and say, what access is this address? And it'll ask us, are you interested in finding out what access is this pointer? Or do you want to find out what access is the address pointed to by this pointer? In this case, we want to say, what access is this pointer? And we'll change the value again. And we might want to have a look through the results. So in this case, we have RSI. And you could have a look at the RSI. 
it has the first address that we put in. You see that is DD280. And right here we have DD280. So we don't want to reuse that. So let's have a look at the other instruction. And that one is also the RSI. So you can see there in brackets, that's the pointer. And it's moving these zeros into, it's actually a compare instruction. It's not a move, sorry. It's doing a comparison, but that's fine. We've got a different address here. And actually this is the same address that I just noted down, but that's okay. Let us search for this. Let's do new scan and it's in hex. We'll add that to the list. Now you might ask why how I was supposed to not reuse the address. Well, actually we didn't search for that address. We had added this as the pointer, but we hadn't actually searched for it. So we can add that. Oh, I just added it twice for some reason. Okay. So we add it, we can take a copy of that. And there was no offset in this case. I should have made that clear, but there was nothing in brackets to say plus 18 or minus or anything like that. So in this case, now what we're going to do is we're going to go and add this as an offset. So we'll add offset. We'll put in this new address and you can see this isn't pointing to the right thing. And it's because we need to move our offsets now. So now this needs to move up 18 and then we'll change that to zero. And now you can see that's connecting to the correct value 3001. So I'm going to take a copy of this address as well. Let's go and add that. We could go and say zero for our offset and let's do the same thing again. So I'm going to delete this address. I'm going to right click this one and say, what access is this address? And we'll do the same again. We'll change the value. We've got a compare and a move. Again, it's RSI. Let's have a look at our RSI. We've got this one ending nine zero. That's the one that we just used. So let's have a look at the compare again. RSI and this one is one four nine two zero zero. So I'm going to take a copy of that. It's got a plus 18 offset. So this is important. What's in the square brackets. We'll take that. We'll go and do a search for it. New scan. We've added it. Let me, before I forget, I'll add this to the offset list. doesn't really matter about that padding and the offset this time was 18. So we'll take a copy of this address. Okay. We're going to go and update our pointer. So you can just double click this and then we want to change this to, we want to add an offset. First of all, add the offset, paste this in. Again, we've got our question marks because we need to move everything up. So we're going to move this to 18. This is a zero is being moved up. And then our new offset is 18. And there we go. It's pointing to the correct value, which is 74. We still don't have a green address though. So we're still not at the base. So let me delete this one. Let's once again do find out what access is the address. Find out what access is this pointer. Change the value. We've got some more instructions to look at. So this one is a plus 10 offset. And you can see we've got this move in the RSI, which is 142900. That's the last one we used. Let's have a look at this one. This is RSI and it's ending 80. That one hasn't been used. So I'm going to take a copy of that. The offset was 10. So I'm going to write that down so I don't forget. Let's paste this address in here. Just doing that to make sure they're in line, but it doesn't really matter. And then we'll do our new scan. We find that address and look this time it has the green address and you can actually see that it's saying that's the EXE. So this is the base address of the EXE plus the offset of 325B00 in hex is going to be where that value is. And this basically should be always the case. So if we add this now, if we're to, let me actually add this, take a copy of this with the address and the offset. I'm going to go into the pointer again and oh, just double click it and add an offset. We'll paste in that full address and we just need to move these around again. I kind of wish there was an option just to move all of the offsets up because it seems a little bit silly just having to manually change all of those. But anyway, we do that. We've got our offsets as we do down here, 18, 0, 18, 10, and they're all looking good. The value is correct. So we'll go okay. And now we just want to test it out. So let me just delete that other address. So all we've got now is this one pointer, which is pointing to these various pointers until it gets to this base address. And now if we, we want to freeze this, as you can see here to, to com accomplish the goal and solve the challenge, we want to set this to 5,000. So we want to freeze it. And this basically just means that if I now change this to 5,000, what's happening is every time the value gets updated by the program. Cheat engine is going to change it to 5,000. So it's just continuously doing that. And now if I go to change pointer, as it says here, we've got three seconds left to change it to 5,000. We've already got it frozen on 5,000. So there you go. You can see that next pops up 
and we're able to move on to the next challenge. And basically we can keep changing this pointer now and this will always point to the correct value. Let me unfreeze it actually, we'll change the pointer, you can see it's 3054. We can change the value and it all looks good. We change the pointer again and it still all looks good. So if any of this didn't make sense to you, I would recommend going back and checking step six of the tutorial, which there is a video for. And if you're still confused about pointers, I would recommend checking out Guided Hacking's videos because they've done a lot of videos on pointers and multi-level pointers over the years and the quality has been great on all of them. So well worth checking out if this is an area you're still unsure about. Anyway, what we're going to do now is do the automated approach. That was how we can manually trace away back to those pointers. But in modern games, you're generally going to want to use pointer maps and then scan for pointers. So how can we do that? Well, let me delete this pointer that we've got. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to clear all this stuff. Let's go back to four bytes and we're not doing this in hex. We're going to change the pointer and just wait for that. Okay, so let's have a look for our first value. It is 3187. Don't worry about all this stuff down here. We don't need that anymore. 3187, we've got our address. And what we're going to do now is right click and do a pointer map. So generate a pointer map. I'm just going to call this one. Saved it very quickly. I'll also change the description of this to value one. And then we're going to change the pointer. So this is now pointing to zero because that value is no longer registered to the pointer that we previously had. We need to find out where this new value is. So we'll do 2621, new scan. First scan, we've got a result. And this is our second value. So we'll do value two. And then let's do a pointer map as well. Generate a pointer map and we'll call it two. That saves very quickly. You can see these are both different addresses. One of them has the correct value and one doesn't because it's no longer pointing to the value. And now that we've got this second value, we'll do pointer scan for this address and we want to compare it to a saved pointer map. So compare results with other saved pointer maps. And you might have multiple here. We're only doing two, but you might want to restart the game and find the value and do a generate pointer map. You might want to do that three or five times. And you might need to change some of these settings depending whether you're working with a real game and how big and complex that game is. Anyway, in this case, we're just going to select our scan one data because we're currently comparing a scan two with scan one. And we want to make sure this is pointing to the correct address. There's only one here, so that's fine. We'll click OK, save the results. It might take a little bit of time. And we get back some results. So in this case, we've got quite a few results. Actually, the last time I did this, it only came back with a single result. So what we could do, you can see all the values here. Let's change the value and see which ones update. So you've seen that some of these update here. Let's add a couple of these addresses. The rest have stayed the same and have now gone to zero. We could do that again, just to see if there's any change. Okay, you see they did change. They change at different speeds, but that's fine. Let's go back and let's have a look at the pointer scans. Let's try and change that to, well, we're not actually gonna see the result here, are we? Let me delete these. Let me change that to 5,000. Change pointer. Okay, well it was already, you can see that's actually set to 5,000. Okay, let me unfreeze these, change value. Ah, okay, so only one of these was correct. Let's do that again, change pointer. You can see that this one is still correct. Change value, change pointer. And that one's still correct. So if we had only saved one of these, then this wouldn't have worked for us. And it might be the case that after a few reboots, this one doesn't work either. So in some cases, you'll want to save many of the results and try them out across multiple reboots or multiple deaths of your character to see which one is the most reliable. All right, hope that all made sense. In the next video, we're gonna look at shared code. So in the previous video, we looked at code injection, but we ran into the problem whereby if we inject some code to make ourselves invincible, it also makes the enemy players invincible. And we want to try and find some way that we can only make ourselves invincible while the enemy players lose health as normal. So we'll look at the official tutorial in the next video and then we'll apply it to a real game, Cave Crawler. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.